And so the key to controlling our tongue is in this verse. It says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So when we have impure words, it shows we have an impure heart. But brothers and sisters, if we have a clean heart, then we'll have clean words, clean lips. Amen. And so how do we obtain um, a clean heart? You know, it's difficult, right, sometimes? Um, it seems like such a burden when, when people suddenly say something that you don't like and you just feel this inward pull saying, must say something back to them, right? It feels like a burden that you're carrying, right? Saying, Lord, please help me not to speak on Christ-like words. You know, my daughter, Grace, the oldest one, three, uh, she was three years old, and we, have a, we live in a townhome. And in this townhome, there's just one step about the size of this, from here to here. Just one step, and one day we came back from the park. She was on her little plastic scooter, and I, w- I, w- I don't know what I was doing. I was looking somewhere else, and she was right next to me. She was trying to get in the house. She had to go over, she had to go over this one step. I wasn't looking, and I heard, suddenly heard her say, Daddy, help. And she had this plastic scooter. It was on her back. She was trying to carry it over this one step, <laughs> and it was so heavy for her. And I looked down. I realized what I was doing, what was going on. I just oh, picked it up and the scooter went, went into the house. You know, what was difficult for her was extremely easy for me to lift. Now, with that in mind, what is difficult for us to control is very easy for our Heavenly Father. Amen? Um, those burdens which seem so difficult, it's an easy thing for God to help. But you know what? We need to ask. Isn't that right? If my daughter didn't ask, I would still be looking somewhere else, right? Now, God knows what's going on, right? So the illustration isn't perfect, but we need to ask. In fact, if you're still in Matthew, please go to the book of Matthew chapter 7 as we learn how to control our tongues. Matthew chapter 7. I'm going to start in verse 7. And Jesus Christ says here, Ask, and it shall be given unto you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone who asks receives, and he who seeks finds. And to him who knocks, it shall be opened. Then he says, For what man is there among you whom, if his son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will give him a serpent? If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father who is in heaven give good gifts to those who ask him? Amen? We like to give good gifts to our children, amen? But the Bible says that even we are evil in comparison with God, and he wants to give us help much more. And so here's a point. Uh, Acts of the Apostles, page 564, tells us that prayer is heaven's ordained means of success in the conflict with sin and the development of Christian character. The divine influences that come in answer to the prayer of faith will accomplish in the soul of the supplicant all for which he pleads, for the pardon of sin, for the Holy Spirit, for a Christ-like temper, for wisdom and strength to do his work, for any gift he has promised, we may ask, and the promise is, ye shall receive. And so here's the thing, when, when people make you upset, brothers and sisters, now is not the time to speak, but rather now is the time to pray. Isn't that right? And you know, the problem that we experience is that the Bible tells us in the book of 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 13, 17, that we should pray without ceasing. But you know what the problem is, brothers and sisters, that when someone tempts us to anger, we forget that verse. Instead of praying without ceasing, we cease to pray. And because we cease to pray, we have no strength. Because our Heavenly Father could help us out. And so we must pray instantly when the first sign of temptation comes we should take it to the lord in prayer we should ask for a clean heart remember because jesus said that out of the overflow of the heart the mouth speaks and we know that verse in the book of psalm chapter 51 verse 10 a beautiful prayer when king david said create in me a clean heart O god and renew a right spirit within me do you know that when you pray that prayer god has an answer and it's found in the book of Ezekiel, chapter 36. When you pray, create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew right spirit within me, then God says, I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you. I will take out the heart of stone out of your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes, and you will keep my judgments and do them. And so what God says is when we pray, Lord, create in me a clean heart, 
then God does the work. Amen? And so our hope is not in ourself. It is in Jesus Christ. Amen? And so, looking back, you know, on our marriage, looking back on our family situation, while the past may be full of hurt and heartache, know that there is a great physician who can bring healing. Amen? Jesus gave all that he had so that you could spend eternity with him in heaven. In fact, the book of 2 Corinthians tells us that, for you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that you through his poverty may become rich. You know, Jesus at this moment is in the most holy place. He's making intercession for us, brothers and sisters. Why would we want to miss out on heaven by indulging in bitterness and an unforgiving spirit? Why would we still hold bitterness towards our ex-spouse, towards our current spouse, towards our parents, towards our family members, towards our brothers and sisters in Christ? Friends, it's not worth it. Don't you want to spend eternity with Jesus? He is there today making intercession for us. He's pleading his blood for us. You know, all heaven is interested in your salvation. Holy angels, frequently visit your home and observe your conduct and speech. They want you to be saved. Jesus wants you to be saved. If we want to be part of the family in heaven, we must first become heavenly family members here on earth. And so, do we not understand, brothers and sisters, that the separation that Jesus experienced from the Father on the cross was because of our sins that had separated him. In fact, the mockings that Jesus received at the cross were because of our harsh and angry words. In fact, the Bible tells us that Jesus was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we may be healed. And so, Today, God is making an appeal to us. Today, God is making an appeal to us. And today, his appeal is very specific. This appeal might not be for everyone, but it's definitely for someone here today. And the appeal is very simple is this. Perhaps you have indulged in a spirit of retaliation. Perhaps you have indulged in a spirit of revenge. Perhaps you have been speaking harsh words in your home. Perhaps you've been kind to your brothers and sisters at church, but at home you're a different person. You know, today, Jesus Christ says to you, I can give you a clean heart. I can renew a right spirit within you. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ Jesus, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. And so today, brothers and sisters, if you want to ask the Lord and say, Father, please forgive me for my unkind words. Blot out my sins by your blood and transform my household. Bring about a restoration in my family. You know, it's always God's will that there be harmony in the home. Do you know that? It is always God's will that there be harmony in the home. And so, today, I encourage you to bow your heads as we close in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for your tremendous love for us, Lord, that you visit us, visit us every morning that you have set your heart on us, that you have died for us, O Lord. And Father, we thank you for the gift of forgiveness through your Son, Jesus Christ, that he who covers the sins shall not prosper, but he who confesses and forsakes them shall have mercy. And Lord, today you are speaking specifically to certain people. Here today, Lord, I know for a fact that they have been having troubles in their home. But Lord, as all heads are bowed and eyes are closed, Lord, there are some people here who want to respond and say, Lord, please create in me a clean heart of God and renew a right spirit within me. Please, Lord, control my tongue. Give me a clean heart and pure lips. Forgive me, Father, for my unkind words that I've said to my family members and to others. If there is someone here today, as all heads are bowed and eyes are closed, I want to pray specifically for you. So as all heads are bowed and eyes are closed, if there's someone who would like to raise their hand and say, Lord, please, amen. Someone else here today that says, Lord, please bring about restoration in my life. Amen. Anyone here else today say, Lord, please bring about restoration. God bless you. 
Anyone else here today? God bless you in the back. I see you. Anyone else here that says, Lord, I have been speaking unkind words, but Lord, you can give me pure lips. Anyone else here? God bless you. Amen. No. God is so good. As we continue, let, let us pray. Anyone else here today? Anyone? Last call. God bless you, my brother. I see you. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we pray specifically for these individuals. Lord, Father, we ask that you send a double portion of your Holy Spirit to transform their lives, Lord. Transform us all, Father. Lord, we, are all, we all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But Lord, today you can bring about a restoration in our hearts. Today, Lord, you can make us just like Jesus. Please, Lord, help us to speak gentle words to others that turn away wrath. Help us, Father, to not vent all our emotions. Father, help us to be instant in prayer when we are tempted. Lord, that final generation, they have no guile in their mouths in the 144,000. And so, Lord, this message is so important. So, Father, please, if there's someone else here today, just one more individual, it's all I have about. Anyone else here today who says, Lord, God bless you. Father, please bless these individuals. Transform our families. Bring about a true revival and reformation. And Lord, may it begin in our homes. May it begin with us, Father. We thank you, Lord, that this is the confidence that we have in you, that if we ask anything according to your will, that you hear us, and that we know that you hear us. Whatever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we have asked of you. So Lord, we thank you that you're going to bless these individuals who have raised their hand and all our families here today. Please, Lord, help us to walk in love one with another. We ask and pray in Jesus' name. Amen.